Hi guys, let's talk about making artwork for yourself versus letting the opinion or what you think the opinion of others will be affect and edit your vision. This is something that I think we've all experienced and had to work through in some form or another at some point in our artistic lives. We're not islands, we're not completely separated from other people. So even if you don't post your artwork out there, there's gonna be people around you who who do speak to and see your artwork and say things, whether it's it's parents who prefer a certain type of artwork or even positive or negative critiques or comments. And then of course there's social media, which is one place that you can get actual numbers on on what things people prefer out of your artwork and and how they like it more. And then you get actual little statistics of, well, this one that I loved didn't do as well as this other one that I didn't love. And it, all of that stuff, there's just no way for it to not affect us in some way. And I think that the first step is just realizing that that is something that can affect us. And oftentimes, at least for me, I don't even realize that that I'm letting it affect my my process of coming up with an idea that I end up editing out ideas or starting from the very beginning with something that I'm not as passionate with because I think that it'll do more of a successful appearance on things like social media or when I show it to people. And this is really hard to escape because ultimately most of us as artists, I know not all of us, but but a lot of us want to show our work to people, whether it's on social media or even just our close circle of, of people that are in our lives. It, in a lot of ways, it's, it feels like that uh, painting or that artistic process isn't done until other people see it and it's out there in the world. So, so we want to put it out there, but we also want to, to a certain degree, be able to separate what opinions people have with what we actually want to do. And I'm not talking about, say, like, actual helpful critique, like things like anatomy or lighting issues or things that actively can make our artwork better. I'm talking strictly subject matter or choices like that, or even color choices in a lot of ways. And there's just a lot of things that you cannot do wrong that it's just intrinsically part of you. But we let people affect it. And and uh, yeah, that's what I've been struggling with a lot over the past couple of years, really since I started YouTube. When I look back at before that time, I just remember getting lost creating these pieces of artwork where I would imagine stories and characters and I would make them come to life. And I just absolutely loved that process. And then when I look back the past couple of years, I, I realized that I'm thinking it. A completely different way that I'll, I'll sit down and think, okay, well, what kind of painting will work for my audience? Or what kind of painting will bring more people to me? And I know for me personally, it has to be a bit of a balance. I do want to be able to, to figure out what people like and find this happy marriage between what I like to create and what other people like to look at. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to talk about some of the things that we can do to combat this. I know this is a little on the rambly side, but but I feel very passionate about this. And I, I've been really trying over the past year or so with lots of failures and lots of successes to, to conquer this, to get back into just making art that I feel really passionate about. And ultimately... What I've found, at least personally, is that when I have a piece that I just, I felt like I really made something that that speaks for me, that's part of me, those videos, those paintings, those posts on Instagram, they, they're better received. I think people do pick up when there's more passion behind a piece. And, and people like that. I do. I like when I see pieces of artwork from other artists that you can just tell that they put their soul into it and it made it something more transcendent. So the first step is, of course, recognizing that it affects you. If it does, this may not affect you, in which case that is that is awesome. That's great that you've you've either not let it affect you, it hasn't gotten to you, or you found a way to conquer it in the past. I'm very impressed. But but what helped me to to figure out that it was affecting me, but also how specifically it was, I was letting my thoughts be tailored by this, 
is I sat down and I thought about a lot of my different pieces going back into the past. And I specifically thought, what was my process with coming up with this idea? What kind of things that I want to put in there, but I didn't. And what were those reasons that I cut it? Was it because the artwork would be stronger and better? Or was it because I thought that it would not be well received or it'd be too weird or too scary or whatever the reason is? And I also like to think about at what point in the process did I start to cut down on those ideas that, that initially I was excited about? Was it in the sketch phase when I was cutting out details or was it from the very beginning I sat down to create something that wasn't really truly authentic to what I wanted? And and having that that little catalog in my head of, okay, I know that 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 this certain time in the process is when I, I tend to fall into this trap or or these are the specific things that I tend to cut out of my work and don't end up putting it into a final piece. And I write that down. I'm, I'm very much a proponent of lists. They help me to be able to keep things orderly and to make sense and to work forward from that. And then I think it's helpful to start putting things into categories. So deciding if there's something that you feel compelled to, to draw or not draw because you think that other people will like it more, maybe because they do like it more. It's helpful to be able to look at that and think, okay, well, do I actually want to draw this or do I actually not want to draw this? And if you do want to draw it, but the way that you've gone about it isn't satisfying, then that's something that you can put on the list. You do like to do that, but it needs to have more of yourself in it. And then you can make lists of what are things that truly make it your own. For me, I, I realize that I... I crave having darker elements in a piece. And by darker, I mean creepier, spookier, scarier, that kind of thing. <laughs> Something that has a little bit of tooth to it and can tell a bit of a darker, more scary story. And uh, I was looking back at some of my past pieces and I could see, okay, well, I, I drew this type of character and I liked it, but it didn't have quite that grip that I wanted it to have. Well, I can take that character and I can add these other elements to it and then it becomes much more of something that I would have loved to put out and I would have loved to to truly say it was mine. And I, I think that that's, that's a helpful approach is just to look at where are you really at when it comes to that? Because maybe it's that you actually do enjoy something but you you hate how normally it's portrayed and you don't want to sit in there. You, you want to make your own thing. So for this painting, for the concept, this was one of the moments where I thought, okay, it's been a while since I've really made something that felt right for me. So I sat down and I I thought about what were some of the elements that I definitely wanted to make in my artwork. And, and one of those was I wanted to create stronger characters, ones that felt much more compelling. And I don't necessarily mean every time like in this painting where she looks very almost confrontational and she has a sword and she looks at least sort of tough, I hope. But I also mean that I, I want characters that have emotion to them and they they feel like they're feeling something. That's what I wanted. I also, of course, wanted more darker kind of themes. So in this one, it's there's a forest fire behind her. It is destructive and dangerous and and that is a scarier topic to to touch on and show, but I wanted to because it, it does provide more of an opportunity to tell a story and it means something to me and it can mean something to different people, but it but it is an opportunity to show something that has more depth to it. And, and yeah, that was so exciting and liberating to work on this piece and know that I was specifically checking off some things and to know that there were still things here that, that I do know that are well received and that I'm still putting out things that people like to see but I'm making it my own I'm bringing it closer to what I would feel really satisfied creating and putting out there and I do have the prints of this piece available at my shop this painting is actually called a single ember and I have her available in an 8x10 and an 11x14 inch print 
I'm, I'm really in love with this painting. Like I talked about, this is one where I just wanted to get back on the right track of things that I love painting or things that I want to paint. So, so yeah, I'm very proud of this one. I loved it. And also, of course, I have the original painting available as well. And I'll have links down at the very top of the description down below that'll take you over to my art shop where you can check out the prints, this original, and all the other goodies that I have over there. And uh, that's about it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.